Coles from Coles Sewing Centre here again today. Um, we're going to do another service and this time on the Epic range of machines. Unfortunately we are at home and we have had requests for other models as well but I only only have the two here um, so that's all I can show you I'm afraid. But just bear in mind that, that some of the maintenance is shown in the back of your instruction manuals for instance how to take off a needle plate and clean the area. So if you're not quite sure on your particular machine, just have a look in the instruction manual and you'll get some guidance there. Okay, so this is Rose's Epic 2 and we'll just give it a quick service to keep you going now. So remember, th first things first, safety first. So power off, power lead out. And we're going to remove the upper thread. Take out the needle using our wonderful multi-tool that comes with the machine. Take off the presser foot. Now to remove the needle plate, just simply touch the button to pop up the bobbin cover, place it aside, and then take the multi-tool, the screwdriver end, pop it under the plate in that corner there, and then just twist, and it will pop up, and then just simply pull it up and away. Just want you to notice there are two uh, lugs on the back of the plate which hold it in place. On some of the very early epic blue ones, the Mark 1s, we did have these start to break off. So just be careful how you handle them. Um, the later models, they're a bit more substantial. Um, but you may find if you've got an early epic one that you've got one, one of these missing. If it is missing, it's not the end of the world. It will still work. It just won't be quite as stable in the actual machine. Okay. So that's out of the way. I'm going to remove the bobbin. Uh, remove the bobbin, then remove the bobbin cover and the bobbin case on the Epic 2. It's a light grey rather than a black. Then we will look into cleaning the bobbin area. So we have a little brush here. We just take out any debris, lust or debris from around that area. If it's really bad, I would suggest you get a vacuum cleaner pipe and just suck it all out. Okay once that's done I'm going to take my fingernail and I'm just going to run it around that inner circle of the hook area bearing in mind I don't want to catch the end of the hook point there because that will be uh, that will cut my finger. And if you find any rough any roughness around there if your finger falls into some roughness just take your emery board and shape it into it and then just rub away any damage any debris along there. If you've got any debris along there, it will cause the spread of a thread to shred and even break. So it's worth just double checking it really well. Once that's done, um, we can then look to the cutter mechanism. And I'm just going to move the fetcher, this part here, across to the middle. And I want you to note this side as well as I do it. There's another fetcher comes forward. So two fetchers come forward together. Okay, so that then exposes the knife area and the knife is just here. So I'm going to take out this front fetcher. It just simply lifts out at that point. And all I'm looking for is any damage to, around this hook at the front there. If there's damage on there, the needle may be hit it or something at some point, or thread wear. If there's a, a bit of roughness, it would hold the thread and it won't cut properly then. And you also find you've got loops to the bottom of your fabric. So just take the emery board and just clean it off if you need to. Once that's done, uh, to put it back in the orientation is two pips to the top one large pip to the bottom and the large pip goes into this point here so I'm now going to take it and I'm just going to drop that end in and just let it lay flat that's all you need to do now we come to the actual knife now the knife wants to be clean and the easiest way to do it on this on these models is just to take a pair of tweezers and just pick up any threads and remove them but please note these two brushes here they are critical to the operation of the cutter mechanism. So don't think they're, they're fluff or, th or threads and try and pull them off. So these two white brushes, initially they were white, um, leave those in place. So once you've cleaned all that out, we can bring the fetcher back and the other one should go back at the same time. There we go. Okay, that's all back in position and cleaned out now. 
we've cleaned out this hook area. This is the part that actually creates the stitch and bring, picks the thread up from the top. That's all clean and clear. So now we need to just check the bobbin case and we're looking for any needle damage or any other damage around these front areas here. We sometimes find this part here gets quite damaged. There's actually it's a little bit on there. So I'm just going to take the emery board and just give it a little clean just so that doesn't snag the thread at all. Then just rub, rub your finger and fingernail just around the complete circumference of it. And if you find any bits that your nail drops into, give them a clean. Okay, that looks, all looks good. We'll just check then the bobbin case tension's all right by just popping in our needle and just opening out the tensioning spring and just give it a blow out and you might find a big lump of thread Thread fluff comes out of there. So that would affect the actual tension. Checking the tension is is correct. I'm going to put the bobbin into the machine, into the bobbin case, sorry, and lock it in as if it was threaded in the machine. There we have it. If it shouldn't fall away, but under a little bit of a tug, it should start to drop. And you see that's starting to fall. That is correct tension. That means there's no debris stuck inside. Uh, that bobbin case tension spring so it should give the correct tension okay to replace the bobbin case back in the machine the two ears facing forwards finger and thumb just hold it and then just let it drop into place and once it's in place if you give it a wiggle you know you've got it right if it just moves backwards and forwards we then need to check our uh, bobbin cover and it's the inside rim of that i'm looking for any nicks or burrs along there if you find one, just take your emery board, and just give it a quick, quick clean. Once you're happy with that, pop it back in and it just sits from the front and down. It just drops in, very simply. Okay, now we come to the needle plate. In the needle plate you will find that there is a big cutout on the end here. That's to do with the cutter mechanism, so don't worry about that, that's, that's normal. But if you find any other roughness or any area in there, you can take your emery board and give it a clean. Okay, we then do a check on the table to make sure it's full level. If it's got bent in any way, you would find that it would sort of wobble now on the table. So it's nice and straight. If it is, it is bent at all, you would just need to give it a tap with a toffee hammer in this area to get it back level. Now we notice we're coming to put it back in now, two lugs at the back, two springs on the front. So the two lugs go into hole here and hole here. Okay, so just be gentle with it as you bring it back in. Sort of guide it into the two holes. And then when you've got it in right, you hear it click. And then you come down to the front and all you're going to do then is just put some pressure on to make these two spring clips at the front locate. So. That's all nicely back in position now. We'll check the bottom of the uh, presser foot for any damage. And again, if there was any, just take your emery board and just fetch it off. We'll pop that in, pop in a new needle. As far as the Viking machines, the needle faces the flat side on the needle, faces to the rear. So the screw's already open. And then bring the needle in and just make sure you push it in and you push it until it stops all the way up to the top of the clamp. Clamp it on and it's done. If you don't get it all the way up in the clamp you will have two problems. One, the machine won't stitch very well, you'll probably find it skips stitches. And two, you, that steel hook you so I was showing you earlier on, that will start to get damaged. So it's very important that you... Uh, ensure the needles incorrectly. Okay, I know some of you uh, are tempted to take off this front cover to see what's inside there. Can I recommend that you don't um, for the simple reason is um, if you don't quite have the knack of getting it back in, uh, you can break the, the upper lug and then it won't fit anymore. And that part is about 65 pounds and it obviously won't be covered under warranty if you break it yourself. So I would recommend just leaving that exactly where it is. Okay, and the machine now should be ready to sew. So enjoy your sewing during the lockdown. Thank you.